is uh, Jerry Chernowski. Jerry is a solid uh, statistics turned uh, structural biologist. Inspired by hidden order of macromolecular, um, he cultured computational methods in crystallography and bioinformatics, such as RNA brinks, uh, brick warp, and RNA masonry. He has made contribution to crystal st uh, structure mo model building uh, suit ARPWOP and adopted uh, uh, it to automated uh, interpretation of cryo maps. And currently, uh, Josh built model for macromolecules into um, crystallograph uh, uh, crystallographic and cryo maps uh, at MBL Hamburg. In the meantime, he developed computation methods to make his and others' work less a hassle, like uh, find my sequ uh, sequence, and he's going to present um, his work now. Over to you, Josh. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. I, I hope I can hear you and see my slides. Is it fine? Yes. Okay, okay. so uh, so briefly I will talk about model building and various aspects of that. So uh, the title, title is a bit longish, so I will start with a brief uh, graphical uh, abstract of my talk. So I will talk about the traps in model building. So we know they happen, there are errors in models, and this is a particularly interesting one because this is a model built uh, 300 uh, years ago, roughly. Uh, yeah, that would be better. And uh, people often have, laugh at this model, and I uh, tend to ignore the fact that it was built by two really uh, great scientists, by uh, Leibniz and a uh, lot of uh, von von Garike. And they made a mistake. They made a mistake because they were exploring unknown. They basically knew very, very little about the uh, prehistoric animals. If they knew more about them, they most probably would recognize that this is basically a model composed of two different animals. It's a mammoth and rhino. And that will be the first thing I'll be talking about. So how to identify the animal you're building or how, how to identify the sequence of the protein that you're built uh, based on new scarce uh, data, either in EM or MX. And the other problem is that even though you know very well what you're building, there's still errors that uh, tend to be quite easy to spot when you know where to look at them. And otherwise, they uh, go through the uh, very strict scrutiny that uh, we use nowadays in structural biology. So I will talk also about the validation of the model sequences. Okay, so the unknown proteins, it's, uh, it's nothing new, both EM and MX, and, but it seems to be much more important now for, uh, in, uh, in the field of EM because of the changes of the methodology. So it's possible to uh, build the reconstruction based on native extracts. I'll talk about that uh, a bit more later. The reconstructions can be made directly in cells and still there must be lots of unknowns, unknown proteins in uh, complexes like that, even though overall the structure is pretty well known. And of course, there are also problems with uh, identified proteins in uh, protein crystallography. It can be because it's crystallized from natural sources, or it's simply a mistake with mislabeling of a structure. But still, the structure needs to be solved and then identified in order to proceed with the interpretation of the structure. Okay, so because the problem is not new, there are also known methods how to cope with this kind of problem. So basically, there are two main uh, ways to, to solve the problem of identified uh, protein. So it can be either the model can be built into the initial density map, backbone on the model, and then using fault recognition tools can be compared to the uh, known proteins in databases. Uh, which can be quite difficult in the presence of crystal symmetry, for example, when this uh, specific chain cannot be recognized as a whole. The other approach is to build some kind of a footprint of a sequence, again, based on the map and initial backbone model. It can be a guess of a sequence or uh, some kind of uh, uh, list of probabilities of different residue types along the chain. And this can be used to search, to query the sequence databases. And uh, I will show you uh, now, program find my sequence that I developed to, to address the problem modification of protein sequences uh, and to automatize it, to make it more reliable and uh, more objective. So, so the program, it's a basically a, a pipeline that fully automatically uh, detects your sequences, and it, but it starts from a dissolved structure. So in case of the, uh, of the EM map, it needs to have a map and kind of, kind of a, a initial model or already solved structure with initial main chain trace. And then uh, this initial model and the map, it's interpreted by, 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 by neural network classifier, which basically assigns probabilities of different types of residues to each uh, 
see alpha atom position in your model. And quite important here is the input to the classifier. So basically, it takes a cloud of points that is rigidly attached to the backbone, which means that if the backbone model is wrong, then the result of the classification will be unreliable. And that makes it uh, very, very specific. And based on the, on, the, on the initial classification, the method builds a uh, uh, pseudo uh, multiple sequence alignment that is fed to the uh, hammer and then that uh, is, uh, then queries the databases. And also the same method can be used for building the models. I will talk about that a bit later. Okay, so first I, will, I, will not, I won't show you any benchmark results today. I would like to concentrate on uh, very specific cases when I use the method with others to solve very specific problems in crystallography and EM. So the first one is uh, it's a very peculiar one. So so this is a snake that's quite popular and uh, quite frequently um, found in, in, in South America. And it's quite dangerous beast, unfortunately. That's why it's quite important to study its uh, venom. And, uh, and uh, this is important for drug development. And Diego Wolfram and Dan, uh, I think it was six years ago already, uh, purified several proteins from the venom of this snake and crystallized them. And, but of course, they had a problem of solving the structure because they didn't know what exactly they, uh, they purified and crystallized. And how helpful there was uh, Simbat, which was a quite early version there, but still uh, with Adam, Ronald, and Daniel, they, they managed to solve the structure. And they ended up with the initial uh, model like this one. So you see that it's a, there are a few errors, few uh, side chains doesn't really fit the density. Uh, this can be rebuilt. Uh, with our pork in this case, that uh, when it's used without the sequence information, uh, places already short say chains that are can be placed with high reliability in the model, which is a quite useful interpretation of the model. And that's the, the final model, the final sequence with pretty good scores. But the most important in the story is that after solving the structure with Simbat, uh, we could not have proceeded with this uh, pipeline because the sequence of the protein wasn't known at that time. And uh, only after through three more years, another group uh, sequenced the venom of this uh, of the snake. And then based on the proteome they released, we could identify the correct sequence, uh, we find my sequence and, uh, and, and publish the, the, the results. And uh, quite important, another important feature of this experiment is that uh, there's not only one protein A in this uh, homolog uh, in the venom, so there are actually uh, six of them with a quite wide range of the sequence of the of the mutual sequence identity. And uh, the one that we identified the top hit using find my sequence, we had to very carefully validate against the data. And it turned out that uh, actually the score that was assigned by uh, by Hammer within the find my sequence pipeline was a very accurate estimate of the of the quality or the, of the similarity of the hit to the to the actual structure. And that's a quite important feature of find my sequence related to the way how the neural network Incorporating the software works, so it's very reliable. When when it uh, says it it, it found a, a solution with uh, good e values, then it's uh, almost always uh, correct. Okay, that was about crystallography. Uh, now about EM. I said it may be even more useful in uh, in EM because of a little bit of the data that is extracted directly from the natural sources. And uh, to illustrate you how the Find My Sequence works with, uh, with EM data, I will tell you a story about uh, another experiment. So this is a work uh, jointly with, uh, with Panos and, and Janos. And, and Panos lab is an expert in, in reconstructing uh, uh, EM reconstructions direct, directly from the, on the native cell extracts, which of course means that the, all the reconstructions they built needs to be uh, identified and uh, corresponding proteins need to be found in databases, which is not that straightforward. And this is uh, a re recent work. And uh, Janis Janos is, uh, is a leading out of the paper. And he's also an audience. So if you want to know, learn more about the experimental part, even part of the project, you can ask him on, on, on Slack. OK, so in, in this experiment, that ended up with four reconstructions. The first one, it's, I think, uh, trivial for everyone. Uh, it's basically a ribosome, actually pre-60S. The other one, they identified using a uh, so-called Omokage search. It's a tool available in uh, PDB Japan, and it's basically using the uh, global features of complexes to find similar structures in, uh, in, in PDB database. So with the OMACA research, I identified it to be fatty acids uh, synthase. Then with alpha fold, I predicted the structures. 
of the subcomponents. So it was impossible to build a complete structure with alpha folds of these two megadalton structures. I had to build, in fact, six overlapping uh, substructures and then fit to the data. And that, I think uh, regarding the, the, uh, this model building question of the structure is quite important in the context of what was said before, that uh, the alpha alphafold is the end of structural biology. So they think it's not. So to build the structure without the uh, to predict this complex as a whole without the EM data, even though it's a relatively low resolution, it's simply impossible because, first of all, it's too large to predict as a whole. And on the other hand, the subcomplexes, sub parts of the complex, doesn't really make sense in the context of complete complex. They make sense locally. That's why without the scaffold of the map, it would be impossible to combine them into the uh, complete structure. Nevertheless, with the final model, a bit with alpha fold into the map, uh, define my sequence, can confirm that it's indeed this sequence that was initially recognized with the global Omokago search. The other one, uh, it's uh, also quite interesting but from the other perspective because it's sub for angstrom resolution reconstruction. And this one could be identified de novo. So I build the model with R, uh, RPM, RPOP for EM, and then use the fragmented model uh, we find my sequence identified as a uh, the heterogenase, and uh, in that case, I I did not use the initial uh, R port model for model building because it doesn't really make sense. I again use the alpha fold predictions to reconstruct the, the local features of the model. And the next one, next one is the funny one. Uh, so I will I will talk about that in more detail. So for th in that that case, uh, Omokaga search returned two different uh, hits. Uh, both are basically the heterogenases, but they are uh, they have roughly twenty percent sequence in common, so like far, quite far away from each other. Even though they form very similar uh, complex, and then I bought I, I, I built uh, alpha fold structures, predicted alpha fold structures for both of them, fitted into the map with good, and then I basically had two alternatives because I could say that this one fitted slightly better to the reconstruction, but it wasn't fundamental difference. So then, on the other hand, the, the resolution of the map was too low for the uh, visual inspection of the map and agreement of the model with the map. But find my sequence using complete model, identified both models, even though the first one was slightly worse than the other, as the oxo acid, uh, the hydrogenase, which I think shows how, uh, how powerful the combination of the, this neural network uh, sequence identifier with the uh, with the alpha fold uh, structure prediction software is in the prediction of the, of, of the identification of the structures. But what's quite important here is that, uh, in fact, I use this, uh, this uh, find my sequence to, uh, to validate some kind of hypothesis. So I have basically two different solutions of the problem, and I use find my sequence to find the one that is indeed correct. So it's uh, basically a hypothesis testing, but for the global structure. Another question is if one can do the same uh, for the structures locally for to validate the local sequence assignment. And uh, so the, my hypothesis would be to use the following uh, approach. So instead of taking complete structures, uh, I will take sort fragments of the models and assign them one by one into the target sequence. Then for each of the assignment, I will compare the uh, sequence identified by Feynman sequence and, uh, the, and with, the, uh, with the target model. And there, of course, there are two uh, possible outcomes. So either the sequence are the same or they differ. And then depending on the p-value, you can either say something definite on the, on the solution or not. So if the p-value is close to one, so basically probability that the, uh, that the sequence assignment is truly random is very high, then you can say nothing. But if it's very small and the sequence are okay, we can confirm the sequence assignment. But then this, when the sequence differ, you can definitely say that something is wrong with the model. But there are a few more questions that uh, we need to answer before this idea can be used uh, as a uh, model validation software. So is the p-value that we use here a reliable score? So what does it mean p-value is small? Of course, the p-value is some kind of an estimate internally done in the software. But uh, we want to know whether we can assign some kind of a threshold that separates the wrong assignments or not reliable ones from the ones that we can rely on. So to, bet, to, to investigate that, I took uh, uh, more than 700 structures from PEV at four functions or better. 
And then I cut them into pieces, into 30,000 protein chain fragments of 20 or 40 residues, and assign each of them to the corresponding target sequence. And then uh, there are the following results. So when the sequence is OK, which means that, it, that the new, newly assignment sequence agrees with the model sequence, the p-value of the assignment goes down with the local resolution, this local resolution of the specific fragment, which is as expected. But of course, the p-value can be also uh, decreased, so the scores can be made more reliable simply by increasing the fragment of the length of the fragment, which is quite important feature. On the other hand, the, the sequences that are assigned differently than in the reference models, they, the, the p-value, the p-value do not depend on the mean local resolution, which means that maybe some different factor than the information content, local information content of the map uh, affecting the quality of the assignment. Then the, uh, then for, it can be, for example, the quality of the model, or maybe the model is wrong. So in such a case, it's always very informative to look at the outliers. So this dashed line corresponds to a 99.5% confidence interval, which means that uh, based on on, on this uh, threshold, I expect half percent of the of the structures that I wrongly assigned to the sequence to be above this line. But you see that there are lots of them. So it's very good to have a look, closer look at this specific uh, cluster of the structures. It, it turns out that most of them correspond to this structure. And uh, this is a 3.8 axon resolution model and it was built in 2016, it's released in 2016. It was built by, from scratch in CUT. So I think you agree with me that it was really a challenge. So I, I'm not sure if I will dare to do the uh, manually interactivity myself. It's simply a very difficult task. And uh, the plot below this fragment shows the results of the sequence assignment of short fragments to the target sequence. And the bar plots correspond to the negative logarithm of p-value, which basically means that the higher they are, the more reliable sequence assignment is. So when the, when the bars are very high, we are really sure that uh, we are correct. But when, they are, but when they are high and red, it means that the sequence assignment is very reliable, but it's different than the reference model. And, the, and one of those bars that are red here correspond to this fragment. When you look at it, I'm not sure if you can guess that there is any problem or not. So now the question is, can we find a better hypothesis that will challenge the one that is presented in the deposited coordinates? So fortunately, we have alpha fold. And for it is mouse protein, so we can, the, the, the corresponding model can be downloaded from the, from the database. And it turns out that, that this specific fragment is predicted with high, very, high rely, uh, very high scores, over 90, which is uh, usually like a stylographic quality. And this comparison of the two models. So I'm not sure if you can really spot easily where is the problem. So basically, scientists have very poorly resolved, but this one, issue in the end of this helix, I think you can see it here. It's not properly traced in this region. So it would be the only hint that there's anything wrong with this model. And, but for the software, it's clear that this time, the sequence time is fully correct. And the scores assigned to this region are very, very high. So we found a better hypothesis that challenged the uh, the, the deposited model. And this new assign, assignment agrees with was proposed by the sequence assignment procedure. And this is, uh, comes down to the, uh, to the software that I, that I that I've developed based on this uh, idea. So it's called Checkman Sequence and basically a comprehensive sequence assignment validation tool. So the most important here is that it works on a statistical test basis. So it will not print you lots of scores for different regions of your model, but it really doesn't matter because the scores used internally in the software, are completely local resolution independent, which means that if program says that it's sure that something is wrong, then something is wrong. And uh, in, apart from the half percent uh, of the cases when it may produce statistically uh, wrong solutions. And what it does, it uh, tests the following thing. So first of all, it tries to identify the sequence of, uh, of specific chain uh, in the model. And of course, it, it usually does it well because the chains should be complete, but sometimes cannot do that. And that means something may be wrong with the, with the specific chain. So maybe it's outside density, maybe strongly chain traced, maybe it's 
this reference re uh, sequence is simply missing in the in the reference set. Then it checks for the local sequence match matrix. It's of course trivial error that during the position will be fixed, but it's good to have it fixed as fast as possible. And this uh, tool uh, can do it for you. And then uh, it take, take, checks another trivial problem, and this will be the uh, the chain breaks that are not account by the indexing. That happens very very often in PDB. Uh, that uh, basically are, there are uh, yeah thanks. So basically there are uh, gaps with a zero length judged by the uh, indexing of the residues. And finally, when all the above are excluded, the program intends to uh, to validate the uh, the sequence assignment in the model based on the backbone model and the corresponding map. And the program is very easy to use. So, and it's relatively fast. And it's, of course, it's, uh, it's, it's a binary classification software. So it says it's, there's a mistake or there's no, 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 no problem. So uh, I ran it for a larger data set. So I basically took 6,000 Cryolium models at five functions or better. So there's uh, 7,000 of them in total, but they exclude very large maps for pure technical reasons. These are, these are uh, mostly viruses anyway. And uh, the average runtime for this data set is, uh, is roughly one and a half minute, which means that uh, it took uh, uh, over, over 100 uh, CPU hours to calculate. That can be done a day in a, on, a, on a modern laptop. And I will show you now a few issues that I found, the, most, uh, the, most, uh, the easiest ones to spot by eye. So I basically, uh, I tweaked the presentation of the models in a way to make it clear for you that there is an error and where it is. And so, so let's have a look. So that's a very common error in, in the ribosomes. It's basically can be found in most of the 70 years ribosomes in PDB. And I think it's clear for you that there's an insertion in there. The helix should be straight. This is a, a similar issue with the helix that this time should not be bent, but should be, uh, but should be broken in this region and traced slightly differently. Again, quite common issue, unfortunately. And this is quite a peculiar mistake because then uh, the, all the residues in the model are truncated to alpha and shifted by two residues uh, relative to the better hypothesis. Even though you can easily spot, uh, for example, tryptophan in here. And this can be easily corrected with uh, find my sequence that can also be used for, for model building. And here is a problem that resulted in one residue shift. And I think you can spot the design insertion over here. And this fragmented density is not fully resolved. And, but again, I'm showing you very specific focused fragments of the models. It's a huge thousands of residues. It's easy to spot the error now, but when you look at the complete structure, it's very difficult. Another one that's also uh, easy to fix after uh, changing the, uh, the geometry of the main chain slightly and moving the, uh, the sizes on the other side and assign it to the sequence shifted by four residues. Again, easy to spot when you know where to look. And this one is a peculiar one. So I think it's quite clear to you that there's a problem, some density that is not really explained by the model and can be fixed. But what's peculiar in this one, that, uh, that all the chains in this uh, structure are shifted by 10 residues from start to the end. And the backbone is completely fine. So must have gone, something must have gone very, very wrong here during the position. So this kind of errors, of course, are uh, difficult to spot. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if you'll be surprised that I just showed you the six uh, issues, the, mo the very uh, prominent ones, but there are over 300 more of models out of 6,000 I tested with plausible sequence assignment issues. So of course, it's impossible to prove you know, uh, right now that the errors are there. But fortunately, uh, there is a next talk by, by Philo. And we're working very closely during the past few months because uh, we both developed similar, uh, addressing similar problems of sequence assignment uh, uh, validation, but using completely orthogonal approaches. And uh, Philo was showing during his talk that most of these 300 uh, issues that I recognize can be confirmed with completely independent approach. So I, I think it might be interesting for you. Okay, and with that, uh, I would like to thank people who were involved. This uh, quite a few of them. So, so with Daniel, Adam, uh, and Ronan, and, and we work on the on find my sequence. And with Daniel, with Philo, we discussed a lot about the sequence assignment uh, issues, and that was quite important cooperation because I said work on uh, orthogonal approaches. Diego Wolfram and Dan crystallized the the venom uh, proteins. With Panos and Yanis, uh, we work on the 
uh, modification of the proteins in uh, native extracts. And I will also thank Matthias and Jan for keeping me uh, busy at, at, at EMBL. And, and, and finally, find my sequence is published already. It's available on GitLab if you want to install it. And it will be in CP4 uh, soon, so most probably after the 8.0 release. Checkman sequence you can find on, the, on BioArchive. It was posted a few days ago. It's online already. And the source code is uh, on GitLab. So you're welcome to use it. And if you have any problems with that software, just let me know. Thank you for listening and we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you for this nice, uh, talk. And we have a question in the Slack, it's Paul. Uh, Victor showed an example of in his talk um, where the protein uh, could not be traced using polyalanine sequence, but could uh, the fake sequence uh, of large or small residues. Could you, uh, your network, um, could you not ne natural network, uh, he, uh, could your uh, network could be used in our warp to build the most likely uh, sidechain? Uh, uh, so in principle, yes, but but this this method is completely independent of our warp. So I, I'm not really working on on our warp anymore. So I not, cannot really contribute uh, directly. But this this is open source project, so anyone is uh, is free to use it. And I think it would be easy to incorporate in any building model building software. So basically, find my sequence can do the model building straight away. It's, uh, so if you want to use it in Kult, ARP or any other program, you're free to do so. And if you need an API uh, to make it easier, just let me know, I can do it for you. Thank you, and we shall move to the next speaker. And